back. I'm Tedward and today, thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts, we are revisiting the 1954 Jaguar XK120. This is the exact car I drove a few years ago and it was in fact my first real introduction to the Jag world. I was terrified to drive it. I was not particularly skilled at driving it, but I still managed to get it down the road and make some incredible straight six noises. I have a little more experience driving classic cars since then, so hopefully we'll have a smoother drive in this today, but my goodness, is this one of the most gorgeous and outrageous sounding vehicles ever produced. It has an inline six, it's 3.4 liters, and it has dual overhead cams, hemispherical cylinders. It's pretty raucous. It's basically a straight pipe all the way back. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking once we're on the road because we're just going to enjoy it. It has a four speed manual transmission. It's a MOS box, no synchro into first. They made these in a few different body styles. They came as coupes, fixed head coupes, drop head coupes, and roadsters as this sits. So there's no roof on it. You can attach a sort of like tent like roof to it. And there's also a tonneau cover that you can put to preserve those seats. But the best thing about this car is that it was essentially a one family car. Uh, my friend Jake, my BMW mechanic at Wild Motorsport, his father bought this car when he was like 18 years old and it's just been kind of been passed down. And it's wild because he has photographs of this car basically in pristine brand new condition. It's been unrestored. So you can see all of like the bubbling gaskets, all this rubber and stuff. It's all so ridiculously authentic. And you know, this car, it's running. It runs, you can drive this. This is not some barn find that you had to rip apart. I mean, yeah, these seats are pretty rough. There's some holes in what looks like hay inside basically. But you know, this is such a great example of the history of these cars. And the XK120 is so radically important because in 1948, this was the fastest car in the world. It got its name XK120 because it could go 120 miles per hour. Now, over the years, they got a little faster. So I think this one could do like 148 or so. And it got a little more power. This one's around 180 to 200 horsepower versus the 160 that originally came out. We've got four wheel drum brakes with knockoffs that I had Justin at Bond Group give a few whacks to before we went out for a drive to get under the hood. Got to come down here. We pull this and that releases our hood. We have a pretty normal latch down here. You can see right there and up she goes. There is a hood prop, which I am not going to engage right now because it is probably quite hot. I have been driving. You can see the steering column coming down the right, the right side of the screen, and that goes into a recirculating ball steering system. And then, boom, there is our giant straight six. We've got twin SU carbs on the side, and man, oh man, does this thing come alive. Great throttle response. And this engine basically lasted until the early 1990s in certain iterations. It's so wild. And what's great too is that you're able to drive these types of engines later on, uh, a little more punched out like the 4.2 liter XKE or E type. Even down here, they've put a little badge that says made in England, just in case it wasn't abundantly clear that you're driving a Jag. Ow, that is so hot. Oh my goodness, the sun is beating. We have two mirrors. What a luxury, but you know, you got to set them early or else you're not going to be able to do that while you're driving. This nose is outrageously long. And let's take a look in the trunk because there is some reasonable space back here. Turn this and then up we go. There's another little prop down there. And then under here, we've got a spare wheel and tire, a jack, some tools and my stuff. But there's a bit of room for some luggage so you could do some serious grand touring. My favorite thing about this car are just the doors. You have to open them from the inside. You reach in, you pull this, and we're open. They latch beautifully. And it's just wild to see this big slab. Now, these cars have steel chassis. The first XK120s were ash. They were wood. Wooden cars. I think they only made about 240 to 250 of those cars. And then they went to the steel chassis for mass production. So I love this car. I want to go bond with it a little bit. And we're going to go for a drive. But first, today's video is sponsored by Factor. 
If you're like me, you're too busy to cook. Between work, workouts, and social time, the last thing I wanna do is come home and prepare a meal. So with Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store, shopping, prepping, and cleaning up while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat it and enjoy it, then get back to crushing your goals. You can choose from over 34 flavor packed meals. And if you need an extra boost to support your goals, you can try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. Right before I recorded this, I jumped off an airplane, drove home, and I was starving. And my options are eat all the junk food that's readily available in my house or turn to a factor meal and get my protein and nutrition. So I cooked up a jalapeno lime cheddar chicken with spicy cilantro cauliflower rice, and I'm good. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code TEDWORD50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Now let's get back out and drive. To start the XK120, let's close up this door. Get a good neutral. Our parking brake, our handbrake works wonderfully. We have our key and ignition. You can hear that fuel pump give a couple clicks. We're already warmed up. And this is our push to start button right here. Jumps right to life with our anti-clockwise tachometer, our regular clockwise speedo up to 140. And then you've got oil, water, amps, and fuel. So we are pretty much good to go. This car gets outrageously loud. And if you're wondering like, wow, that steering wheel looks so imposing and large. Yes, it is. It is telescoping. I don't know if it can go in any further, but I'm honestly, a little nervous to try it out right before going for a drive in case um, I screw it up. I don't want to lose the steering wheel. I don't know how this thing works. Maybe, you know, the nuances of people's old cars, you just have no idea sometimes. Now these brakes are very much a vague suggestion. So it's something to very much keep in mind when you're driving this car that you're not going to be able to stop as fast as you're going to be able to accelerate. So let's release this. I'm going to give a little nudge in a second before I go into first. Make sure it gets in there nice and tight. Sounds outrageous. the brakes are pretty vague like you get into the pedal they go pretty much to the floor you've got to pump them up a little bit and then oh yeah you just gotta apply some serious pressure four wheel drums not uh, the most awe-inspiring because they will fade if they overheat
shocked by is for 1954 how tight this car is i mean there's very little if any play at all in the steering i mean it it, it goes when i tell it the chassis feels incredibly tight i don't feel confident necessarily chucking this into a corner on i don't necessarily know what these tires are i don't know if they're actually still cross flies but they're probably somewhat old maybe not a great idea to go experiment with that but is sporty and you can tell it's a sports car by the way it operates the gearbox is fantastic i I'm, I'm a lot more amenable and and comfortable with the idea of these moss boxes now than i was when i first drove the car and especially like third and fourth very nice and comfortable to find not a big deal um oops i left see i did it i did the thing i left the non-self-canceling blinker on which Oh, so frustrating. There's a little a little light up here. My bad. happy car. It's a tiny bit of stickiness in the throttle from like full off to that slight engagement. So it takes a little bit of finesse to try not to jolt the car when you're going from being off pedal and trying to feed it just a little bit. Motoring in the 1950s surely was something outrageous and special and cool. So much so that they even brought this car back 
for like cruel intentions. I think Ryan Phillippe drove one of these in Manhattan, which God, the stress of driving this in Manhattan. Cool in the movie, probably a nightmare in practice, not for me. But anyway, I'm really glad I got to revisit this car. I got to kind of conquer it since it stressed me out so much the first time I drove it. I feel a lot more comfortable in it now. And you know, having a fire extinguisher and having a fire extinguisher with me helps too. You never know when you have an unrestored old car. You know, if things get a little spicy, you want to be able to do as much as you can to help out. So thank you so much to Bond Group for tossing me the key to this old friend. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I hope you appreciate some vintage motoring, and I hope you appreciate just a, a short little run around town and a very cool vintage Jag. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. with this thing because this steering wheel is gonna come straight through your chest it's terrifying it's like a it's like a javelin going right at your heart